When the sun sets into a clear, crisp horizon, and when there is no land in front of you for a few hundred miles, and no distant moisture that could become, at the final moment, a backlit cloud that obscures the opportunity, you stand a very good chance of seeing the green ray. The last ray of the dying sun to refract and bend beneath the horizon is the green ray, which is just slower than the red or the yellow ray. Sailors see them more than the rest of us, and they have come to signify, for some, the harbinger of great change or fortune in their lives. For years I've sought out the green ray, peering at horizons for the last fractional second of greenness, not knowing or daring to imagine how extravagant a green splash it might be, but never have I seen it. And then in the summer of last year, as I set off to a small, near inaccessible village on the west coast of Madagascar, I had a quest to try and see, if not film, something that I could not imagine. The point about my film of the green ray is that it did so nearly elude me too. As I took vigil evening after evening on that Morombi beach looking out across the Mozambique Channel and timing the total disappearance of the sun in a single roll of film, I believed but was never sure I saw it. The evening I filmed the green ray, I was not alone. On the beach beside me were two others with a video camera pointed at the sun, infected by my enthusiasm for this elusive phenomenon. They didn't see it that night, and their video documentation was watched as evidence to prove that I hadn't seen it either. But when my film fragment was later produced in England, there, unmistakably, defying solid representation on a single frame of celluloid, but existent in the fleeting movement of film frames, was the green ray, having proved itself too elusive for the pixelation of the digital world. So looking for the green ray became about the act of looking itself, about faith and belief in what you see. This film is a document. It has become about the very fabric, material and manufacture of film itself. Film and digital are just different mediums. They're very intrinsically different. They're made differently. They're seen differently. Film is my medium, just like oil is the medium of painters. You know, I need the time of film for my work and, and the atmosphere of film. I edit on my own in this room, and it's here where I always I really make the work, which is something I could never delegate. It's something that's just between me and it. A lot happens in your head when you, between when you film something and when you get it back. So it's a gestation, it's a thinking period that happens. 